Festivities are wrapping up. This place is rocking. The home opener is coming up next. And welcome into the ballpark. Happy to have you with us. The show brings you a matchup of division rivals. It's the Tampa Bay Rays and the Toronto Blue Jays. Alongside Chris Singleton, I'm John Chomby. The cameras are out for this one, partner. Home openers are unique and always bring a special type of energy to the ballpark. Uh, today is a celebration. It is the beginning of a new year, and there's no other game like this one on the schedule. It's the first time playing inside your home stadium with your brand new teammates, and you know the fans are going to bring the energy. The excitement is already building in here. Just about set to go now. And on the mound now, Jose Barrios. Singing, he's a guy that can rack up a lot of strikeouts. Well, last year, kind of around the league average in terms of ERA. And you know what? That's why you have five different spots in the starting rotation. You've got to have people round things out. And not everyone's going to pitch like a number one or number two every outing or every season. But last year, he gave his team an opportunity and a chance to win every time he took the mound on average and when you look at that kind of performance it has a place on every ball club to right green moving under this one puts it away for the out Second. All right, let's take a look at the Rays lineup. Chris, this is a lineup offensively that could be really good for years to come. They're deep, first and foremost, but the way that they can manipulate their personnel for matchups and everything else, it's... Uh, very intelligent the way that they use their team and I, I think it creates a little bit of uh, uncertainty for opposing teams especially in a big game big series here's a rocket out to left Carter puts it away and there are two down the third baseman number three Evan two outs base is empty Longoria. and now the veteran third baseman Evan Longoria well the Blue Jays have seemed to go all in on players with MLB dads what about those advantages, guys that have been around the clubhouse a lot? They are not afraid. Being in an intense game, 40,000, 50. Ah, that ends the inning, so we take a break. We're midway in inning number one. And now the Blue Jays will get their initial shot. No score. Bottom of the first, and towing the slab in this one, Jeffrey Springs. Well, he throws the change in the slider off the fastball. I really like how he's able to sell fastball, but it's really change up and keep hitters just out in front a little bit. Swing and miss, soft contact. The slider as well comes out of the same tunnel. All three very deceptive, and hitters are going to have to stay back and make sure they get pitch recognition. Bottom of the first, and now Paul Molitor stays alive. One and two here. Just missed. Really good take, especially with two strikes. Kicks and fires. And a base hit on the line. And the leadoff man aboard. Now it's the second baseman, Santiago Espinal. Espinal. The 1-1. One one. Runner takes off. Line drive. Base hit right center field. And now runners at the corners. Nobody out. That's back-to-back -back singles for him. I'll tell you. Man, it's such a good feeling when you smoke a line drive into the gap like that. I mean, sure, home runs are king, but I feel like nothing makes you feel like a true professional hitter more than a bolt the other way. Here's the Toronto catcher, Matt Meyer. Molitor on third, Espinal on at first with nobody out. 
Next pitch is inside. The count now two and two. And he deals. That one off the mark, and the count's full. Well, he's not afraid to fall into a two-strike count. Knows the strike zone very well, so much so that I think umpires will look at him and determine whether it's a ball or strike, if he swings or not. The 3-2 is off the outside edge, and that is ball four. Well, the stage has been set for this offense, Boo. It's all about creating opportunities, and this is one of them right here. Carlos Delgado digs in now. You need a strikeout, and you need a ball perhaps on the ground for a double play or get yourself a pop-up, something, but you've got to make some pitches. But if he can battle and get through this, he can earn some points. On the ground to third, might be two. Over to Lau. And a run scores on the double play. It's always great when you can add a run, but in this situation with the bases loaded, double play is kind of a rally killer. Now the left fielder, Joe Carter. The 1-1. Late with the swing there. Here's a one-two. And a ball evens the count. They've got him working a little harder in this first frame than he anticipated. Two outs with a runner at third. Swing and a miss, and that is that. So they pick up a run on two hits, no errors, and a man left. We move to the second in Toronto. It's the Blue Jays one, the Rays nothing. Back here at Rogers Center, all set for the start of the inning. And stepping in for the Rays, Brandon Lau. Swings through that one. It's a strikeout. And that's the first out. Harold Ramirez at the dish. The first baseman, Harold Ramirez. Next offering is in for a strike. One down, base is empty. Pitch misses. Two and two. Joe McDonald doing the home plate duties here. Well, Joe is an interesting one. I'm always trying to figure out what exactly his zone is. It feels like it kind of moves around from game to game, sometimes inning to inning. Swing and a miss. Struck him out. Two away. So two down now, and here is Brett Phillips. The one-two. Swag and a miss. The velocity blasted it right past him. Nothing doing for Tampa. They're down one nothing. Welcome back. Bottom of the second. And here's the veteran outfielder, George Springer. The pitch. Center field. Phillips in position. Drops into the glove. And there's one away. Batting seven. The right fielder. Shaw. Green. 
Sean Green next up for the Blue Jays. We talk about guys with good speed, and definitely he has it. But pushing the offense aside for just a second, Chris, it's the defensive side that I think the speed factors in the most. Next offering is in for a strike. Well, he gets to balls that get by most people at that position. Just really impressive because there's certain times. And now this one's a rocket to right. Way back there. Dog. A towering home run. And they add a run. It's 2-0. Pitchers are taught to keep the ball down so that you don't get hurt. But unfortunately on that one, he made a pretty good pitch in terms of location, but it was just a better swing. Base is empty one away. Here's Teoscar Hernandez. That one ripped, but foul. Three two on the way. Swing and a ground ball out to short. Whips it to first on the run. And Hernandez is out. Batting none. Not shortstop. Whoa. Two outs, base is empty. Bobichet getting ready to hit. Well, in their win last game, this guy came up with two home runs. Obviously trying to keep the roll going here in this one. Next offering is in for a strike. One ball, two strikes. And a ball and two strikes. Cut on and missed. Struck him out. That is the inning. <laughs> Toronto extends the lead on the solo shot. It's now a 2-0 ball game. And welcome back. Top half of the third inning. Now it's Randy Arozarena. The pitch. And a foul ball. He stays alive. And a pitch. Next offering misses down and away. Swing and a miss. Struck him out. Leadoff man retired here in the third. Tell you what, those are the types of guys pitchers really like to punch out when they're on the mound because if they get on, just the distraction that they create with all that speed over on the base pass, it could take away your focus from the next hitter, and that's the last thing you want to do is serve up a pitch that a guy hits over the fence, and it's a multi-run home run. This looks like extra bases. Takes the turn. He's digging for second. The throw in. The throw to second is offline. Got the top of the ball a little bit, but not much. That was hit pretty hard through the infield, so I think he'll be happy with that swing. Definitely generated some good bat speed. One out, runner at second. Francisco Mejia coming up to hit. Right-hander kicks, deals. And that one wrapped foul. The one-two. Way inside, gets out of the way. Straighten him up a little bit. Franco over at second, one down. Stays alive. Out to center. Makes the grab. And there's two down. The right field, Manuel. Here's Manuel Margot. 0 for 1. He flat out to right this first trip. 
Singy, you got to appreciate a guy who's this good defensively. I mean, watching him track balls in the outfield, it is beautiful. Here's a 1 1. Bounce to third. Molitor handles the chance, whips it to first. And that is that. The Rays strand just the one. They trail things here 2 0. Set for the bottom of the third. Here's the third baseman, Paul Molitor. When he steps into the batter's box, the comfort level looks so high. It doesn't matter what kind of delivery that pitcher has, what kind of velocity, what kind of secondary stuff. He is so settled in there, he owns the home plate area. Zips it to first. One gone, now bottom of the third inning. The second baseman, Santiago Espinal. So up next for Toronto, Santiago Espinal. Next offering is in for a strike. Swing and a miss, and he got him. And there are two outs. Thought it was a pretty good pitch. Top of the strike zone. We're seeing more now fastballs in that good location. Catcher. Hitters, especially yeah. with two oh, strikes, yeah. have to be ready to pull the trigger. Two outs, base is empty. And next for Toronto, Matt Meyer. Two outs. That one missed. Bounce to the right side. Lau gloves it. Fires over to first. Third out, and that ends the frame. Three innings complete. Blue Jays two, the Rays nothing. to the fourth at the plate now for the Rays is the DH Yandy Diaz and that's a base hit so a runner aboard to start the inning hey whatever works right doesn't have to be impressive kind of got it off the end of the bat as he punched up the middle there maybe pulled off that outside pitch just a little bit but he stayed on it long enough to get something on it Evan Longoria next to hit for the Rays this guy is one of the best athletes in the sport ripped to third and caught And now it's Brandon Lau. He is very much your typical power hitter. I'd say he falls into the three true outcomes category. Well, we've seen more and more of that lately. The ability to drive the ball to slog is getting... One at second. On to first, double play. And that's the inning. On now to the bottom of the fourth. Blue Jays two, the Rays nothing. now in Toronto John Chambi and Chris Singleton with you and leading off the bottom of the fourth Carlos Delgado the why to kick the pitch and that one just missed off the outside edge that's where you want it. it's a good miss And now the lefty popped up to the left into foul ground. Longoria makes the play. One down. That was a good hard fastball with some nice ride up in the zone right Don't there. Hitter him. looked like he Go. was on it, but I think that velocity Carter. at the end just beat him. Instead of a line drive or something hit deep, it's a pop up and an easy out for the defense. The big lefty turns, kicks, deals. Swings and misses. And the count one and two. Up. 
popped up. Lau settles underneath it. He makes the grab. And a couple of quick outs. The center fielder, number four, George Springer. Here's George Springer. Next pitch is outside. And a big swing and a miss. Well, a hitter looked pretty comfortable on that swing. Pitchers don't like to see that. We'll see how he changes it up on this next pitch. Next offering is foul back. Two two now and downstairs three two now got him and it's a one two three inning down in order go the Blue Jays but they're on top two nothing. Back here at the ballpark, we go to the top of the fifth. Here's a speed threat, Harold Ramirez. It's interesting he plays kind of a, a power spot defensively, but runs pretty well. So when you're looking at that position, you're not expecting someone that has maybe above average speed, but he does. That one misses, so a leadoff walk. That could jumpstart an offense that's really struggled to score in this one. Don't want to wake a team up with the free pass. Brett. So digging in, Brett Phillips went down on strikes his first time through. Smoked in the left, base hit. Lead runner to second, so two on and nobody out. Well, that may end up being an at bat we go back to later on when this game is over. Nice job of driving that pitch the other way on a line. You know, hitters, they take so many reps in the cages working on going to the opposite field, and it doesn't always translate into the game, but right there it did, and he did it perfectly. The next offering misses. Two and one. No outs, runners at first and second. And a 2-1 hammered, but foul. Definitely got the hitter conscious of the pitch inside. Really think the outer half is open. Righty to the plate. In the air, left field, down the line. Carter puts the squeeze on that one. One away. Good pitch. He just kind of had him out in front on that pitch away and wasn't able to stay closed. Now batting Wander Franco. Definitely wants to stay out of the double play here. Ball on the ground in the infield. Should be an inning ending double play. You know, Boog, if you're that base runner at second base, you want to be quiet out there. Not bouncing around, not distracting your teammate, the hitter. Make sure that he can clearly focus on that pitcher and that release point. Two two now. And now the count filled up three and two. In the air, right field green. Moving back for this one. Makes the catch. Two away. Now that Francisco. Francisco Mejia next to hit for the Rays. Back to work. 3-2 now. Fouled off again. And it remains 3-2. Three, two. 
and that's ball four. Well, interesting. He went with the off speed and walked the hitter. Man, you got to challenge the guy with the fastball. So the Rays batting order turns over. Manuel Margot next to hit for the Rays. The pitch. Swing and a ball lifted to center field. And George makes the grab. And the Rays leave him loaded. And they're down 2 nothing. We head to the bottom of the fifth. And now for the Jays, Sean Green. He's someone that you might not describe as having elite level speed, but he can absolutely move, and it is a factor in his game. The wind of the pitch. And a foul ball, he stays alive. Boog, this guy's definitely a plus runner, but what I love about him is that he goes all out every single time, never takes a break. It's guys like that, even though they don't have the elite speed, the fact that they're consistent with it, they make moves on the base paths. Movement in the bullpen, J.P. Fireisen getting ready to go. Fleming, the lefty, warming up as well. Two and two. And that one fouled off. The 2-2. Two -two. Good eye right there. The guy at the plate could recognize slider out of the hand. Didn't stay in the tunnel very long in terms of depth and perception. He knew right away it was an off-speed pitch. Kicks and deals. And a foul ball. That's a laser base hit. So a man on base to start the inning. But when you see that many pitches in it at bat, your chances of succeeding go up. And right there, we see the result. And now Teoscar Hernandez. Here comes a pitch. Nope. We got two balls, one strike. Green aboard here at first with nobody out. Next offering is fouled back. And here it comes. Stays alive. And the pitch. And a foul ball. He stays alive. Nobody out. Runner at first. Ground ball left side. Could be two. Longoria. Toss to second. Relay to first. Double play. Now batter. Not shortstop. Bo Bichette up to the dish. And a pitch. That just misses. And it's two and one. The wind of the pitch. That's in there. Oh, this is deep to left center. Way back there. On its way. Gone. Bobachek blasts one out. Third home run of the season, and they add to their lead. It's 3-0.
knew what pitch he wanted to hit, spit on some other pitches in this at bat, was very patient, and it paid off. Back to the top of the lineup, down the third baseman, Paul Molitor. Lifted in the air, right field. Stretches out and hauls it in. Bulbichette goes yard for the Jays. It's now 3-0. Top of the sixth inning. Now up for Tampa Bay, Yandy Diaz. And the pitch. Swing and a ball hammered left field. That's back. Didn't quite have enough. The bat. Singy, he made a tough play after a long run to get to that baseball. I have a feeling you want to see it again with StatCast. Absolutely, and what was so key was that first step, Boog. It was a good one, and it's got to be. And if you're going to be able to cover 125 feet to run that ball down, and, you know, not a lot of outfielders in this league are able to make that play or even make it near consistently. Next to hit, Evan Longoria. Starting to get some pretty good timing on that breaking ball, but he's going to have to stay ready for a fastball. Don't want to watch one go right by you. The pitch. And it's filled up. Talk about the right guy at the right spot. They really need a rally, and this guy is someone you can believe in to find a way to get on base. So now three and two. Fouled off again, and it remains three and two. Short hop liner handled it short. The throw, two up, two down. Now batting the second baseman, Brandon Lau. Lau at the plate. He provides a surprising amount of pop from the second base position. Listen, that's not something to take lightly. Getting that kind of production from the guys up the middle, it's not a strength of most lineups. Back to the mound. In plenty of time to first. Lau out on the play. Third out. Two, three, four, due up in the home half of the sixth. It's the Blue Jays three. The Rays nothing. New pitcher on now, J.P. Fireisen. And he'll do his best to keep this close. Well, at this point of the ball game, we're talking about middle innings, and he need a little length out of this arm coming out of the bullpen. We'll see just how many outs he's able to give his skipper. Back here at Rogers Center. Now the number two hitter, Santiago Espinal. And what does that do for a team when you get power from unexpected spots like that? When you're in the dugout and you see a guy come up big like that that you don't necessarily expect it, it just energizes that entire team. One and two now. Swings and misses. Now one away. Well, that's always the key to effective pitching is getting ahead in the count. And as a pitcher, it really allows you to start expanding the zone. Guys become defensive, and all of a sudden, for the hitter, that plate starts to get really wide. And what happens is, because of the pressure, you end up committing to a pitch as a batter before you recognize what it is, and that's what leads to the strikeout. Next to hit, Matt Meyer. Up the middle. Lau collects. He is safe. And he beats the throw by a whisker. The first baseman. Carlos Delgado now at the plate. Left hand hitter waits. And another ball. Meyer, the base runner at first with one out. Oh. 
Next offering is fouled back. Two two now. The punch out there. That's the second out. No, just couldn't pull the trigger on the fastball right there, and I don't think he was taking it, thinking it might be a no called ball or anything. I just think he was flat out frozen. Joe. Did not expect Carter. that location, in my opinion. Man at first, Joe Carter next up for the Blue Jays. Sharp grounder. That's through for a base hit. Seems like he got exactly what he was looking for right there. Wasn't able to elevate that one, but he sure hit it hard enough to get through the infield. There's not a whole lot of time for the defenders to react and try to make a play when it's ripped like that. So two on with two away. George Springer will hit next. 1-1 one, one now. Ball, that pitch is out. Wings through that. Springer checks his swing. Now it appealed to first. And yes, he did. Freddie Ferguson rings him up. Blue Jays leave a pair, but they lead it 3 0. New inning getting started, and now Harold Ramirez. The next pitch misses. Two balls and a strike. Movement in the Blue Jays' bullpen. Adam Simber up and loosening in the pen. Romano getting loose as well. Kicks and fires. And there's a foul ball. Tapped on the ground softly to short. On the run, throw to first. And the leadoff hitter set down to open the seventh. Now that the seventh fielder, Brett Phillips. And here is Brett Phillips. Really good piece of hitting last time going to the opposite field. Swing and a ball lifted in the air. Shallow left field. And puts the squeeze on that. Two down. Now back the left fielder, Randy Orozarena. Here's the left fielder, Randy Orozarena. And that one is lifted in the air. They get the out on a Rosarena. And that's the third out. Rays go in order. One, two, three. They trail in this one. Three, nothing. Now a new pitcher for the Rays, Matt Whistler. It's his job to keep his team in the game. So digging in, Sean Green. Right-handed reliever, just missing there, and a full count now. And that's awfully close. I don't know how you take that. He's seeing the ball out of the pitcher's hand really well right now. And he deals. Stays alive. And the right-hander deals. The other way, and he beats the shift. A 
All over that one right there. Fastball pretty much middle middle, and that's what you fall asleep dreaming about as a hitter. So no surprise he put a great swing on it. And now they've got some speed on first, so we'll see if they try to get him into motion. And now to the plate, here's the Toronto DH. Teoscar Hernandez. And the next pitch is way outside. Out of line, out towards center. And a base hit. Lead runner holds up. They're at first and second with nobody out. A couple of hits in a row for him here. Everything was on time and fluid in that swing. Got a pitch he could get the barrel on and lined it into center for the knock. Those always feel good. And the batter will be the shortstop, Bo Bichette. That's hard hit on the line. A Rosarena makes the grab, and that is a big first out. Now batting, the third baseman, Paul Molitor. And now it's going to be Paul Molitor. He's kind of an outlier, especially when guys are consciously sacrificing contact to deliver power. puts it in the air out towards left center and that'll fall for a base hit throw back in holds the runner at third base is now loaded only one away hitting is really easy for some guys one thing that I can see already his bat stays in the zone on plane for an extended period of time and guys like that they have a high contact rate and they have more barrels because of that bat being on plane. And even when you don't get it great, it's still hit hard enough to dunk something. Now batting catcher Matt Meyer. Here's the Toronto catcher Matt Meyer. This guy's turned into one of the best catchers in the National League. He is quite an athlete. I mean, you look around the other sports, basketball, football, you feel like he could thrive in one of those sports, too. Green at third. Hernandez over at second. Molitor at first. Two out of the inning. Line drive, and that should be extra bases. One run across. Another scores. Two runs in on the play, and the lead is up to five. Gets the job done as he brings home a pair. I love the approach he had right there with that pitch. Not trying to do too much, but still looking to drive it, and that's exactly what he's able to do into the opposite field gap for the double. Shane Baggs comes on now. Comes in with runners at second and third. So two down, Carlos Delgado next up for the Blue Jays. Not the easiest thing when you're talking about a guy that's, you know, perhaps is going to be in the rotation, or maybe a long relief guy to not start an inning, to come into an inning with pressure on it and, and try to get yourself comfortable. And a foul ball, he stays alive. Second and third, two down. Got him. Good job at damage control right there. Eighth inning coming up. It's the Blue Jays five, the Rays nothing. And welcome back. Here's Wander Franco. Next pitch inside. And a count two and one. Toronto's bullpen with some action. Trevor Richards appears to be getting loose. Mesa getting cranked up as well. The two one. Good eye right there. Three one now. Foul ball there. Oh. 
And a base hit up the middle. Well, oh, that'll make you feel good as a hitter right there. Smash that yeah, one through the infield for the knock. Good. When it's hit that hard, yeah, it makes it very tough on the infielders to make any sort of play. So, man aboard, Francisco Mejia. Next to hit for the Rays. The pitch. Swing and a slow roller. And they put the tag on him for the out. The right fielder, number 13. Manuel. Here comes the manager out of the Blue Jays dugout, and he will make a move to the pen. That's all for Jose Barrios, and he's responsible for the runner on second, so the book isn't closed on him yet. We'll be right back. New pitcher now for the Jays, Trevor Richards. And he's got a nice lead to work with. Trevor Richards. So the batting order turns over. Manuel Margot up to the plate. Next offering is fouled back. One, two to Margot. And now the count is even. And the righty deals. Now the three and two. Right through there. Got him. Two gone now. This guy will throw any pitch at any count. Three, two. He goes off speed. Gets now the out. The designated hitter, Yandy Diaz. Yandy Diaz now. Next offering is foul back. Two outs and one in scoring position. Inside and it hit him. He had two strikes on him and he hit him. Well, right now he's thinking, man, I wish that would have been an off-speed pitch, but instead of fastball, and you can tell that hurts a little bit. Next one is off the play. Now two balls and a strike. The pitch. That one drilled left field. That ball's carrying. Turning, looking, and that one is gone. He flexes his power with that swing. His second of the year, it's 5-3. Oh, that one got in the jet stream on a line drive. We saw the numbers on the backs of the jerseys of the outfielders, which is usually bad news. And all of a sudden, they're back in this ballgame. Base is empty with two away. Next to bat will be the Rays' four hitter, Brandon Lau. He has, as they like to say, light tower power. Not a big guy, but a big swing and thunder in that bat. Looking very settled on the mound here in the eighth. One more out. They'll probably hand it off to their closer for the ninth with at least a two-run lead. On the ground right side. Delgado oh. takes it himself, and that will end the inning. But the big blow of the inning comes right here. A three-run homer. It's now 5-3. Welcome back. Bottom of the eighth. And now for the Jays, Joe Carter.
Three one is on the way. That one hammered center field way back there. Pulls it in on the warning track. The center fielder, number four, Joel Springer. And it'll be George Springer to step to the plate. At the belt and fires. On the ground to short. Whips it across. And a couple of quick outs. The right fielder, number 15, John. Green. So up next for Toronto, Sean Green. No matter what, when you're playing this kind of rival, take your game to another level. Here's a 1-1. And a foul ball left side. One two now. On the ground, right side. Base hit, and that extends the inning. Clearly seeing the ball very well in this one. He kind of rolled over on this pitch a little bit, but he got enough behind it to shoot it through for a knock, and we'll take that any time you can get him to find a hole. Two outs, runner at first. Now it's the Toronto designated hitter, Teoscar Hernandez. And it is two and one. Right hander kicks, deals. Chris with that distraction and the speedy guy at first, he's in a favorable hitter's count. Well, if nothing else, I mean, this is a great spot for a hitter to be in. Foul ball. 3-2, two, two out, runner on first. A lot of movement in the infield. Hitter's got to stay focused on the pitch. Check on the runner. Green no, back right. in standing. Green, the runner at first with two gone. And a foul ball. Throw to the first. Green, back in on a dive. That one to first, slides, but he can't come up with it. Throw in, holds the lead runner at second. Two on now with two away. Back-to-back -back base hits. Not much to this one other than just a willingness to go the other way and put the ball in play. That's a team to bat right there. Nice job of staying back and letting the ball get deep. Bobashek gets a chance to hit. Righty delivers. Stays alive. Looking for some insurance. Or as our friends down in the South would say. Insurance. No matter how you say it, we know what you mean. The pitch. Got him swinging. That's the third out. Tom Henke gets the ball now. And he'll do his best to hang on to this lead. We go to the ninth, and now Harold Ramirez. The 2 1. Lined into left center, and that should be extra bases. Now he turns and heads for second. And he greets the new arm from the bullpen with a double. Nice double right there. Loud contact coming off the bat. Didn't get enough air under to drive it out of here, but he'll take that swing and that result every time.
So next to the plate for Tampa Bay, Brett Phillips. Good plate appearance there. Able to take the walk. Walks out of the bullpen can absolutely kill your momentum very quickly. They're in some hot water trying to protect this lead. First and second, no outs. And stepping in for the Rays, Randy or Rosarena. The pitch. Out there to center. And that is Springer. Squeezes it. Runner tagging for third. And he moves up 90 feet. Runners at the corners now. One away. Wander Franco next to hit for the Rays. This is what stat nerds like myself might call a high leverage situation. Yeah, Boog, not sure what the numbers say, but clearly an at bat that could change the course of this game dramatically. Kicks and deals. On a line. No trouble here. Puts it away for the out. Runner tags from third. The throw is offline, and he's in to score. And now they trail by one. That wasn't your standard sack fly. He barreled that baseball, just couldn't get it to drop in. And now the catcher for the Rays, Francisco Mejia. Well, both sides equally as strong. So not a good time to try to turn him around with a relief pitcher and put him on the other side of the plate. Throw to first. Ball game. And the Blue Jays hold on to win a tight one as this one ends as a one-run ball game. Well, not all saves come easy, but he didn't let things unravel. Good win for the boys today. on six hits no errors they left six men on base time of the ball game three hours and 11 minutes tonight's paid attendance at Rogers Center 49,282 the Blue Jays thank you for your continued support and remind you to please drive home safely Yeah, yeah.